Well, I like this bike, kinda. I'm not reviewing it today, I'm making some changes on it. This bike is a Engway folding e-bike, and if you need a folding e-bike, then you need a folding e-bike. I don't. And the thing that I don't like about this bike is this stem. When I'm riding this thing, I, th I feel like I'm trying to steer a pogo stick or something. The handlebars are narrow and, and they're tall like this, and it just feels funny. And, and it's because of the handlebars being, the grips being so close together, the steering is kind of squirrely on it. But it's one of those compromises that you got to make if you get a folding e-bike. And like I said, if you need a folding e-bike, nothing else compares because this, this bugger folds up really small. But I'm not keeping this bike because it folds up. I don't need a folder. I'm keeping it because I love to ride it. And these bikes are very popular for customizing. And I'm changing these handlebars out today. But that brings up something that I want to discuss with you. Warranty. Because according to Engway, by changing these handlebars, I could very well be voiding the warranty. Let me show you what I'm putting on. These are nine inch rise BMX handlebars and they're wide, very nice. Um, I'll be putting a mirror on for safety because riding around town, that's absolutely necessary. These are some spacers, uh, replacement grips because uh, from what I've seen, when you take the grips off the original handlebars, it kind of destroys them. This is a stem adapter that's needed to put the handlebars on this frame. And uh, this is the, um, the part that uh, mounts the handlebars to the stem adapter here. Yeah, according to Angway, even, even if I replace these grips on here, if I damage a grip and replace a grip or something, that could void the warranty. Um, I don't think that, that they would refuse to honor, a, a, for example, a battery gives out or something like that. I don't think they would refuse to honor that just because I changed the handlebars. But if you read the fine print, it very well could. When it comes to e-bike warranties, how concerned should you be with that? Uh, me, not so much. There's basically, this is a bicycle with some components on it that are kind of spendy. Most of the things you have on a bicycle aren't going to be covered by warranty anyway. Um, the brakes, they wear out. The tires wear out. These discs down here wear out. Um, the chain brakes, uh, that's not going to be covered by warranty. That's riding technique and wear. Uh, most things that go bad on a bike aren't going to be covered by your warranty anyhow. Brake cables, they wear out, they break. You're going to have to replace them as a matter of maintenance. The same thing with your front shocks. The seals are going to wear out. They're going to need to be replaced. However, this entire fork setup is only about a hundred bucks if you got to replace it and very easy to do yourself. So what should you be concerned about? There's four items. Well, the Engway EP2 Pro that I just showed you is a nice bike and it's well built. And if it wasn't, I wouldn't have been modifying it to suit the family better. This Magicycle which I really like, is, has become my favorite bike. The quality is here. I like the operating system of the controller better than the other bikes, but there's also the warranty and the customer service. So I showed you the things that aren't gonna be covered by warranty. There's other things too, like fading paint and dents and scratches, and it stands to reason, you know, just normal wear and tear. Cables, brakes, chains, tires, it's all just normal wear and tear. What do you need to worry about though on a warranty? Well, to start out with, let me show you some things. What is it that's particular to an e-bike? Well, to start out with, there's the display up here. These are, these are you know, just totally e-bike related. You know, speed and your pedal assist settings and all that. That display plugs in right here and it just comes over to the selector here. And this whole thing is probably 50 or 60 bucks if you had to buy it. So I don't think that's something you need to worry about on warranty so much. But being electronic, you never know. Moving down from there is the battery. Definitely something that only fits this bike made by Magicycle. Now these batteries on any e-bike are probably gonna run you any, depending on size, they're probably gonna run you anywhere from 350 to $600 for a battery. 
That battery is a lithium battery. You should be able to get about eight years out of it with normal riding. The likelihood of something going wrong with it, yeah, I don't know. I've never had a lithium battery go bad, but once again, it's electronic. Moving down from there is the controller right here. That's what controls the program for the whole bike. That's what senses what the pedals need and, and everything. And that controller is something that, that's electronic, that could go out. I imagine that's uh, 100 to $200 for a controller. I think 200 is more, way more than they, than they cost though. There's a um, cadence sensor in here. It's just a little ring around the pedal and it hooks to the, to the controller. Those are uh, really cheap. And then the only other thing is the hub motor in the back. That's a 750 watt hub motor. And those generally run a couple hundred dollars. They're not that expensive. That is the one thing that can and will go out. Whether that hub drive goes out on you or not depends entirely on how you treat the bike. For example, if you're going up a really steep hill and you're depending on just throttle and it's a long hill, you can burn that motor up just by overheating. You need to use pedal assist going up the hills and just help that motor out. Now those motors are geared. There's, there's gears inside. They're called a geared hub drive motor. And those gears can strip. And what makes those strip is if you're constantly using only throttle to get started from a stop. Like if you're in the city and every time you come to a stop, when you start out again, all you do is crank the throttle. It can put pressure on those gears and cause them to slip. And then they'll start wearing out, start grinding the teeth off of them. Usually when you start out, always give it a little pedal assist or even just a little push with your leg just to get a little bit of forward motion going before you come in with your throttle. You'll do your motor wonders that way. And the third thing that'll destroy a motor is, boy, I discovered this. I didn't destroy a motor, but I heard an odd noise and I went, uh-oh, I know what that is. I was loaded down with gear on the back. I was camping and I was in a bit of a rut and I went to use the throttle to get it going and I heard it go, heard those gears go, tick, tick, you know, slip on each other. And I stopped and I went, what is that noise? Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> That's not good. If you're in the wilds with one of these, get it out of the rut first before you come in with throttle and, you know, get it going that way. Just be careful with the hub motor and it'll last for years. You don't see people talking about these things going out. The motor, yeah, they can be rebuilt or you can just replace them. But as for display and battery and controller, I don't see too much online about those things uh, having faults or anything like that. But those are the things that you would consider using your warranty for. How's that warranty gonna work? They're not gonna send you a new bicycle any more than uh, if your car started, if your brand new car started having some problems or something, they're not just gonna give you a new car, they're gonna fix it. Um, kinda like that, only the company's far away, right? You're dealing with, a, and most of the time you're gonna be dealing with a US warehouse, but sometimes those parts are gonna come out of China and you're gonna have to wait for them. What they're going to do is they're gonna determine what is wrong with your bike and you might have to send them photographs or something like that. And then they're gonna send you a new part. Some companies charge you shipping on that new part. I don't know if MagiCycle does or not. They're gonna send you that new part and they're gonna give you instructions on how to replace it. Most of this stuff is really easy. Even that motor down there, if you can pull the wheel off to change an inner tube, then you can undo the axle bolts and get that motor to slide out and replace the motor too. Most of the stuff is easy to do for the owner. However, you might have to take it to a bike shop and have it done if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself. That's what you can expect. They're not gonna send a mechanic out to your house to fix your bike. You're gonna to have to take care of it yourself. That's how the warranty is gonna work. When I get these bikes in for review, all I can do is tell you how well the bike is made and if it operates the way that the book says and my overall impressions of a bike. Customer service, before you buy a bike, you should do some research on that and see what their reputation is. I know MagiCycle has a great reputation. Um, other companies, not so much. So you all be careful when you buy a bike. MagiCycle has a two year warranty. Some other e-bike companies, it's, it's less, and some of them, it's a lot less. Be sure to read the warranty. And, 
and Badger Cycles warranty reads, manufacturing defects only and does not cover wear and tear or any type of abuse. Now, for example, that hub motor I was talking about, if you overload the bike and you're going up a long, steep hill using throttle only and you burn it up, that's abuse because you should know enough not to do that. Most e-bike companies do not have transferable warranties, which means that if you buy it and then uh, several months later or something, you, just, you decide to sell it, you can't transfer the warranty. Now, most warranties that I've seen, they're about this long. The MagiCycle one is a couple of pages long, but it spells everything out so that everything is clear. But the most important thing is, before you buy, look at that information. It's easy to look up. It's right on their website under service. And then you look down and you see warranty. You can look it up. Well, the new handlebars made all the difference in the world. This thing handles beautifully now. It's a real pleasure to ride. Turned it into a cruiser. Do I think I violated the warranty? I don't think so. I really don't. That would be bad business for Angway to start doing things like that. And in today's electronic age, word travels fast. Now, I think it's a good company. I think they'll, they'll be okay with that. It'd only take me a half an hour to put the other handlebars back on if I wanted to. So what the heck? <laughs> this is nice though. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I shared some knowledge with you that can help in your decision on buying an e-bike. If so, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you around.